Greetings there, everyone, and welcome back to Kaiser Redux. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lava, but we are the Democratic Compact of America, and in this campaign, y'all have chosen that we're going to go and be isolationists. America's been through hacking the times and yet come for us to become embroiled in foreign difficulties. We must look to our home and ensure that's in order to defend our walls should enemies come knocking on our doors, as we'll have our northern boundary defense. First step in our defense must be to ensure that our northern border is well guarded. Canada and other members of the Entente decided to involve themselves in, this, in our civil war, despite it being none of their business. How can we be sure they won't intervene again? We should be ready for anything, for any move that they can make. Naval prominence. Though we control the great American plans during the Civil War, we shouldn't forget Texas. Having access to the sea was a blessing and a curse during the war, but now that we've won, we need to make sure we have a large navy. We shall never be blockaded again, No, and one day we'll conduct blockades of our own. Denounce the war racket. Oil tycoons and automobile companies have begged us to start a new wars abroad, of course. It would be for the benefit, but not ours. We'll not pay our corporations in the blood of our young people. War is a racket. Cool. Make a lot of land ports. Yeah, so you denounce the war racket. You get actually 2.2 more political power every day. You lose mobilization speed. Slightly more multi-population. Lose consumer goods and military construction speed, but that's not bad. Investigate the war lobby. We are sworn by lobbyists on a daily basis. Instead of letting these people get away with a slap on the wrist, why don't we investigate them after all? These are the same people who sided with the MacArthur in the war, and who knows what they might support in the future. They cannot be trusted. Put these traitors away. Actually lowers real tension. Look at that. So to do this one, we need populist alliance probably. No? International Peace Agreement. Can we keep going down this way? Ideological neutrality. The ideologically driven conflicts that are now commonplace in our war are worthless in our view. Why should we fight and die for the same things we fought a civil war over? To what end? Uh, we've seen enough of such conflict, we can't afford to renew tensions in a country over who we support. Of course. More divisions, huh? Don't really need them. I guess y'all just go there. Have fun. Cool. All right. Not bad, not bad. And uh, we're almost have construction done as well. But uh, can we seriously keep going that way? Because we have, maybe. Fully independent. Stop American war mongers. We've had enough of Canada intervening in our affairs. We've kicked the British out of our lands before, but if we are to commit to a new Monroe Doctrine, we have to go further than that. What should our next course of action be towards them? Construction? Oh, of course. Well, I guess, yeah, we, we all go here to this one next. Follow Sydney. Goodbye, Sydney. Uh, Liberate Carlesian Argentina. Argentina has a great potential, but his people suffer under the boot of a dictator. They didn't choose him, and he's not giving them their proper respect as a leader. We should do all we can to liberate Argentina from under his thumb, perhaps create a powerful ally in the process, and break militarist aggressors. We'll track, attack ultra nationalist regimes in our backyard, regimes that have caused endless violence and suffering for the people of the New World. If we can end their aggression, we can promote greater cooperation in religion and act as a bulwark against outside influence on and on the world stage. Favor Paraguay. Uh, strange as it uh, may sound, Paraguay was one of our closest allies in the Civil War. We should turn the favor and aid them in a time of need. The fact that they are surrounded by larger, more powerful neighbors is not lost on us. We'll have to do everything we can to ensure they retain their independence. If you're about this one, please go ahead. It's a volcano, so. I definitely read that one before. Can we do. Requires all of the following, so. Strike left expansionists. Oh, maybe. When left of them goes too far, we must not be afraid to stop it in its tracks. Aggressive left wing regimes now drown out the more peaceful ones and have significantly drive up world tension. We should actually stop them before it's too late. Independence of the Americas. Well, can we actually do that one? The town's finally come. The Americas are free. 500 years ago, Europeans arrived on their shores and began centuries of domination. Now, we can confidently say that it's the end of an era. We should ally ourselves with other nations of the hemisphere so we can stop the Europeans or anyone else for that matter from dominating us again. Mutual trade. We have no wish to dominate the nations of Latin America. We want a true brotherhood with these countries, so we should pursue trading agreements without benefits of all parties involved. This is where people can still benefit from foreign products and resources, and while knowing that we do not exploit our friends to do so. Research initiative. We should pursue new technological advances with the help of our new allies and their resources. With their help, we can gain an edge on our European competitors and become the most advanced nation in the world. That'd be nice. Also, we do have a cup of green pomegranate tea here. Pomegranate green tea, really. That's pretty nice. Uh, defense of military tactics. We should never forget 1812, when foreign invaders burned a capital to the ground. If we want to prevent this from happening again, we should make sure we can defend our country at all costs. No invader will ever reach our capital again. And those bold or foolish enough to set a foot on ourselves will be thrown back. As they should be. Right on their backs. Pragmatic trade. 
Neutrality has its benefit in it, it, that our enemies are few, and thus our trading partners are plentiful. If America's built itself into a truly world power, we must do so on the back of the almighty American dollar, which is pretty good. America first. And never again should America face instability in the threat of civil war. We must look inward and deal with our internal troubles rather than gazing out at places Americans don't belong. America leads forward. Where their efforts consolidate and our focus clear, together the United States can leap forward in the coming century, well ahead of the rest of the world, of course. Peace in our time, our efforts are born fruit, and the last America knows the true peace that strength, that strength and sacrifice can bring. Nice. I'll have another advanced engine soon too, huh? Very good. And overall, I did ask you guys yesterday which we should do: the stick with the Emperor of Missouri or use the Senator from Pendergast. Ultimately, the challenge Gordon, we're going to go with the Senator from Pendergast because there's more support for this one. The Senator from Pendergast is the nickname given to Pendergast's political ally and friendly face of his political machine, one Harriet Truman. With Truman's political reputation still fresh and largely untarnished, it would make the perfect facade leader for a new regime built on corruption and graft. With Truman's soft and trusting face leading the nation and taking the heat from the Pendergast, the king of camps will be free to run the state as he pleases from the shadows of anonymity. And living like a true king. Under Pendergast's political machine, his allies and crewmen all live like kings. Pendergast himself, along with his faithful ally Truman, live like modern kings and monarchs. Dotted on for the every need and growing more and more fabulously wealthy by the minute. This new America now rises, built atop a top foundation of corruption, bribery, gambling, bootlegging, full populism, backhanded business deals, and pseudo civility. It may not be the dream of the founding fathers, but Pendergast's dream has been fulfilled, so. Now, let's let America rejoice under its new King Midas. And so, we've just finished America Leaps Forward, but we have an option now to go to war with good old Puerto Rico, as we do the senator from Pendergast. In the meantime, our guys, well, maybe they should stop training so much. We've got quite a few carriers. Honestly, probably too many. But we're going to repair, repair, repair. Our, uh, these guys will be fine, though. And we've got a crud ton of subs. Five carriers, that's a bit too many. Five even more. Whatever. Let's have a good time with Puerto Rico. Uh oh. Well, I guess we have war the Rikes back now. Oh, well. Who cares? Actually, is anyone else out of the Rikes back that we really care about? No, not really. As long as the Navy protects us, that's all that really matters. Oh, are they here too? Oh, they're right here too. Okay, that makes sense. Well, there'll be a lot of convoy raiding going on then. Ladder repair is going to happen. Modern tank chassis. Overall, not bad. Just give me Puerto Rico. Oh yeah, look, oh my god. That's gonna be a graveyard of enemy ships. They've already lost. They didn't that many to us. Germany, who are you still at war with, man? Because they took out England, but Germany took out Northern England. Oh, they're still at war with the Anton, that makes sense. Cool. What if you force the attack? Could you win there then? Perhaps, yes. Perhaps no. Hopefully they win. It's really sad if they couldn't. There you go. Yep, they're dying. Look at this Republic of Haiti. Trump propaganda, sure. So if that happens, can we just peace out with uh, them? Work with Canadian allies? We should use American know-how and uh, aid our allies in the Kingdom of Canada, sending them a bunch of new equipment and advisors. Sure, why not? They have agreed, excellent. They have agreed to our offer, and our advisors are already en route. Military occupation, of course, is the only answer. Rebuild Puerto Rico? Oh, of course. We don't have Alaska either, huh? What's well, down? You just can't piece them out. That makes no sense to me still. Like, why can't you? Wow, that's a crap ton of convoys. Because we got our guys doing this all over the place and living like a true king. This makes no sense to me. Just send them all out. Over 35 convoys. Germany. Oh, Senator from Pendergast. Pendergast is a very dirty politician. Um, so dirty, in fact, every politician associated with him has not lasted long before some scandal or another had been squashed by a Tom's machine. Considering the fact that all politicians of any note in the entire nation are in some way connected to Pendergast, that means there's little, if any, honesty left in politics. That is how our say for one, a new man has begun to emerge in the political scene, a senator named Harry Truman. Had managed to escape the Civil War and Pendergast's rise in consolidation with little of any Tom Fool or dirt in his squeaky clean image. Harry appears as the Republic as the last honorable man in America. But the public doesn't know that Harry Truman is attached to a Pendergast like an 11th finger. As people grow rowdy bowing to crooks, Pendergast finally has some use for the boy Scout. He has decided to prop Truman up as official opposition. Harry can rant and rave and steam about how the corrupt the system is all he wants and ride the wave of popular support as high as he can get it. Meanwhile, Pendergast knows who just to pay. 
and how much uh, to pay them to keep Truman on side. Let's soon be out of relationship if there ever was one, and an offer he won't refuse. Unfortunately, we're all out of team. Becomes leader of the paternal autocrats. Um, okay. He has some, uh, a daily authoritarian Democrat support, huh? And the Missouri Democratic Party is born. So we got the Pendergast machine. Oh, look at it. Harry S. Truman, look at that guy. The Missouri Democratic Party has been liberalized thanks to the influence of Harry Truman. While so heavily ingrained in the system run by the to boss Tom. So called Pendergast Truman machine signals an important change beginning inside Kansas City and America as a whole. So is this going up at all? No, it's uh, barely, it's not really going up at all. It's just fine with us. Special Forces did very well. Oh no. How dare you. Don't you dare think our boys. Should be good enough. Oh boy. More convoys? Very nice. But let's finish this last one because then we'll probably call it a campaign. How many have we sunk? Democratic Compact in America, over 117,000. That's pretty bad. Flanders Bologna, 10,000. Uh, United Baltic Duchy. Ah, living like a true king, my friends. We're here to live. The future of the new Democratic Party. Nice. Okay, this will be a piece for oh, this one. Let's at least read that event. For the United States secured and uh, the American people finally heal, and the greatest efforts of Pentagon's political machine are finally going to pay off big time. Graft and corruption flows through every avenue and vein of this new union, pumped by the black heart in Kansas City. The Democratic Party has evolved in the future of criminal liberalism, and economy, along with the fat wallet of Pentagon, has only grown and improved. However, with the paper now reaching its zenith, we are free to decide just how to define ourselves in the new political landscape. How should we go forward in this new America under Pentagon's stamp? Maintain the life of the corrupt delusion of clientelism, democracy, and under a political machine, pursue the dream of authoritarian liberalism and rebrand the democratic identity. Pentagast Truman Machine becomes the ruling party. Oh, well, he's still here. So now we're authoritarian Democrats, which doesn't really, really matter too much. We're just be as corrupt as possibly. So I think we'll end it there, though. We've done really well this campaign. So uh, we're going to end up going to be in a war, but Hungary's pretty thick and Austria looks really weird. But if you enjoyed the campaign, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great Henry S. Truman rest of your day.